Hey, this is Joe with Grow It, Build It, and today I'm going to tell you how to grow white oak trees from seed. One of the grandest and most majestic trees that North America has to offer has got to be the white oak. Reaching towering heights and living upwards of 500 years, a mature specimen of white oak tree can truly be awe-inspiring. And growing these acorns from seed can be a fun project. This video is going to be a brief profile on this majestic North American tree, as well as instruction on how to grow them from acorn including what is a white oak and its benefits, where to find the trees and how to identify them, collecting the acorns, testing the viability, germinating and growing them in a pot or in the ground, then we will review. So I hope you stick with me and I will try to give you all the information that you could need on how to grow these trees from seed successfully. White oak trees are deciduous hardwood trees native to eastern North America. Scientifically, they're known as Quercus alba, and it can reach heights of 100 feet or more in optimum growing conditions of full sun and well-draining soil. White oaks are a tree to plant for future generations, though, as they don't grow too fast. They're a slow to medium growing tree, adding roughly one foot of height per year, depending on the conditions. The enormous size and shape of a mature specimen of white oak can make for an amazing display year round. The immense size impresses in summer, the reddish fall colors are beautiful, and its wide branches are even interesting silhouetted against a winter sky. And as some of you may be aware, the white oak tree, per Doug Tallamy, is one of the most important trees for supporting wildlife. This species alone hosts over 200 species of insects. The caterpillars that feed on these leaves will in turn feed numerous birds as well as their babies. Furthermore, the acorns will feed chipmunks, squirrels, turkey, quail, and even woodpeckers will catch the acorns. Also, deer will browse the foliage and eat young saplings. The value of this tree provides to your local environment cannot be overstated. Finally, the lumber made from white oak trees is beautiful and rot resistant. The lumber makes for beautiful florists, furniture, and if quarter sawn, the grain can exhibit these beautiful flecks, giving it a very unique appearance. Okay, so where does this tree like to grow? Well, the white oak tree is native to east, the eastern half of North America from Texas to Ontario and Canada, and then east to Maine and Florida. The preferred growing conditions is full sun and well-draining soil, and it's not too picky on soil types, just as long as it isn't too shallow or dry. So you can encounter this in a hardwood forest, or as a landscaping tree, or out in a local park. When grown out in the open, it will have a rugged and widespread crown. The width of the crown will be roughly equal to its height if it's out in the open. If it's grown in a dense forest though, it's going to have a very tall straight trunk and the crown is going to be much more compact though due to all the surrounding competition like you see here. To identify this tree, you mainly need to examine the bark and the leaves. The mature bark of a white oak tree consists of shallow furled blocks that are light gray or ashy in color. I kind of think that it resembles tile work or puzzle pieces. The leaves of white oak tree are fairly distinct. They're generally four to seven inches long and roughly half as wide as they are long. They're gonna be oviate or elliptic in shape and it's gonna have three to five pairs of pinnately divided lobes. Now the lobes are gonna have these rounded tips and this is true for any oak that's in the white oak family. They'll have rounded tips. If you guys need a quick reference, I have very good pictures at our website, which I'll link to below. It actually contains all the information from this video plus a lot more that I'm not gonna cover here. And if you guys are enjoying this content, please give me a thumbs up as it really does help me out and I do truly appreciate it. Okay, we're going to get into how to grow these acorns now. And this process will actually work for any oak tree that's in the white oak family. So if you find an oak tree with rounded tips like I just talked about with the leaves, this process will work for it. Alright, let's talk about the acorns that this tree will produce. White oak acorns are going to be half an inch to one inch long by roughly maybe half an inch diameter. You're going to see these growing on the tree during summer, but they really won't mature until late summer or early fall. Like for me in zone six, that's September, October. As they mature, they will turn from green to a nice brown color and they're going to fall off the tree naturally. When they drop naturally, you can be confident that the seed has fully formed and should be viable. Also, if you collect your acorns and you don't want to plant them right away, then you should probably store them in the refrigerator in a Ziploc bag, sealed. If an acorn dries out at room temperature, it will die and not be able to sprout. And that can happen in just a few days. Okay, so we have viable acorns. Well, what to do next? Well, let's look at nature. 
A white oak acorn that falls to the ground in autumn and makes good contact with the moist soil will sprout relatively quickly and have a taproot emerge, hopefully finding enough soil beneath it to grow and take hold. White oak acorns do not require any kind of cold treatment. Any cold stratification, winter sowing, it doesn't need that. But we can help ensure the acorns we gather will sprout by making a couple of tests. First, to test their viability, we're going to do this by twisting off the cap or using a flathead screwdriver to pop it off. And you're going to look at the top of the acorn. If you see any type of hole in it, discard the acorn as it most likely has insect larvae inside. The second test for viability is to float test the acorns. Simply drop the acorns in water and wait 60 seconds. Acorns that sink to the bottom are viable, while any that float should be discarded as the floaters usually have some kind of disease inside or weren't fully formed. These are the two main steps you can do to help ensure viability. Any acorn that passes these two tests will have a great chance of germinating and can be planted. But I want to show you one other method for testing viability that is optional, although it will remove all doubt. We can sprout the acorns just by getting them in contact with moisture. Take a container and set a moist paper towel on the bottom. Layer your fresh acorns on top, then add more moist paper towels. Check the acorns every day for sprouting. They will begin germinating quickly. Plant any sprouted acorns in the ground or pots within a day. There is a bit of risk on this method as you can have fungus take hold. So for an alternative method, we can use sphagnum peat moss and vermiculite or sand. Just mix up moist sand and sphagnum peat moss in containers and set your acorns on top or press them partway in. The sphagnum peat moss helps keep the fungus away. Put that container into the refrigerator and check it every few days. Over the course of a couple of weeks, many of the acorns will sprout. Acorns that sprout in the fridge need to be planted relatively quickly, but you have more flexibility as the cold temperatures slow down root growth. Okay, so now to plant acorns in pots. Fill a deep container, at least six inches deep, but nine inches or more is better, with moist potting soil. Make sure the container has drainage holes. Set the acorn on its side and bury it about one inch deep in the potting soil. Acorns started in late summer may have the tree emerge that year, but if you wait a couple of months to plant like I did, they won't emerge until the following spring. Any acorn that is planted in a pot must be protected from squirrels digging them up by covering with chicken wire, bird netting, or hardware cloth. Also, do not leave your pots outside exposed to the coldest parts of winter. If the acorns in root completely freeze, they will die. To counteract this, either bury the pot in the ground about three quarters of the way deep or overwinter the pots in an unheated garage or shed during the coldest parts of the winter. If you do plant a whole bunch of acorns in one large pot like I did, you can separate them by carefully loosening the soil with like a weeding tool or a screwdriver as they're going to throw out a very deep tap root but not much lateral roots. Just be careful not to touch the roots and uh, you know when you pot them up into their individual pots, keep them in the shade for a week or so to take care of transplant shock. The other option you can do with viable acorns is to just plant them in the ground. If you know where you want your trees to grow, simply plant the acorn by putting it on its side and plant it one to two inches deep. Protect the area with a cage or hardware cloth so squirrels don't dig it up, as usual, and the acorn should be able to have its taproot emerge and go down in the soil over the winter and the warm temperatures of the deep ground will keep it alive and it should emerge in spring. And as a final note, when you do finally go plant your tree out in its final location, I strongly recommend you either protect it with a cage or a tree shelter and stake. That way the deer won't eat it, the squirrels won't dig it up, and the rabbits won't chew on the bark in the winter during heavy snows. Okay, let's review. The white oak tree is a deciduous hardwood tree native to Eastern North America. Although a slower growing tree, it can reach heights of 100 feet or more and wide, making it an impressive sight to behold. And these are one of the most important trees for the local wildlife and environment. Collect acorns only when they begin to fall naturally from the tree, and make sure that there are no insect holes in it and that they sink in water. Your viable acorns will sprout without any special treatment. They just need constant contact with moisture, but make sure you protect them from prolonged freezing temperatures and also from squirrels by having the uh, pots in ground or in an unheated garage or shed. Well, that's all I've got for you today. If you have any questions, just ask them in the comments. And I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And if so, please give me a thumbs up as I do greatly appreciate it. And all this information is at an article at my website, which is linked below if you want a quick reference later. So yeah, you guys all have a good one.